Hi everybody, Phyllis Moore, Philosophically Speaking. Have you ever heard the phrase or the concept found money? And what it implies is that, you know, it's it's a bonus. It's a bonus, it's, you know, you know we all have stuff attached to money. Thoughts, um, relationship, feelings, um, whatever it is that we associate with money. You know, we always talk about people that come into money or that were born with money or silver spoon in their mouth and you know they come from old money because their family was very very well off that kind of thing uh, but found money is kind of a different concept in that you know it's like a bonus you know and and for many of us you know we don't come from money we're not trust fund babies we are lucky to have any money in our in our pocket or our wallet or, or what have you and so I guess we all, you know, I'm, and this is going to be mostly tongue in cheek. So don't sit there and, and, you know, pull out your pen and paper and think I'm going to give you some insider trading. I got nothing. But, um, you know, I just, I think we're all supposed to make our way in this world. It's nice if you have a cushion. It's wonderful if people in your family or somewhere along the line want to help you out. But for the most part, we need to have... A healthy appreciation for funds that come our way whether through our job or through you know whatever whatever other means you know maybe extra you know pin money as my mom would say that you know whenever she would uh, talk about us going out on a date or with friends or something you know you're supposed to have a dime with you for a phone call those days are gone plus you know there's no phone booth so <laughs> I think we're I think we're you know well past that um, hopefully you've charged your cell phone when you go out and you will be able to do more than just you know stick your head out the window and yell help me help me you know you'll be able to actually call and make contact with another living soul but when I think of found money it's above and beyond what we have in our budget, above and beyond what is in the bank or in savings or under your mattress. And hey, you know, if you've never heard that concept, that's what people used to do when they didn't trust the banks. They would put the money um, in a in a box, a, a, you know, a security box under under their uh, under their bed or in a drawer, you know, so that they had money at all times. Because, you know, you're talking many folks who ha had lived through the depression when the banks crashed and the stock market you know kind of flattened and and what have you so that all the money that they have if you ever watched um oh it's a wonderful life i was trying to think what's the name of the movie that kind of reflects that and there were a lot of questioning people who showed up at the bank saying you know i want my money i want to draw withdraw all my money and of course banks don't operate that way they have your money but it's kind of floating all around making making money for them <laughs> as well as hopefully us but there's just there's too many variables but uh that kind of reflects that type of of image of people that didn't quite trust out of sight out of mind and i have joked many times that i am a hair breadth away from having my money under my mattress making sure i know where it is at all time because you know there's so many things we hear and it can get very confusing what is that 401k your retirement plan you're making your money work for you having an ira investing money this and that and and do we have enough will we have enough it's really hard to say because of course we don't know how long we're going to be around so therefore it's not like we can get it to all come out evenly Ugh, mind boggling right but basic basic premise found money in the strictest picky uni sense is when i am out and about and i am taking a walk in my neighborhood if i find a penny or a nickel i am tickled to death that is found money that is a bonus that's like a profit to my day of course some would argue well if you weren't going down to the store to to buy a you know a soft drink or a piece of candy or you know whatever people buy at convenience stores if you weren't spending it you would have lots of money so every time you spend some you know not that not that you get it back but kind of trade it off but I am a fan of nickel and dimes and and pennies you know I, I've heard some people I will not name names say I won't even bend down to pick up a penny. Oh, fine, fine by me. 
that's more for me to pick up. Or those who say, well, whichever one it is. Is it heads up, it's lucky, or heads, you know, tails, it's lucky. Hey, it's a penny. It is a penny. And you add those up and they accumulate. That's my belief. So if, if other people feel like it's beneath them to pick up a penny, great. Leave them for me and other people that I know. It's really funny because my husband just this week made a comment to me when I said something about I found a penny and then when I was coming out of the store I found another penny because whether folks are aware that they've dropped them or they just don't want to be bothered with you know picking bending over and picking them up or maybe it was dark or whatever but I am always looking down when I am walking I am looking down and I have many times bent down to pick something up on the off chance that it is a dime glistening in the sun. Sometimes it's not. It's a piece of tin or I'll see something and it's a piece of paper, whatever. But hey, worth the effort. So, you know, that's just me, but I know I'm not alone. That's why I am boldly saying these things because I have talked to people who have, have indicated that, yeah, it's, you know, it's something. Be aware because it might help you later. You, you go to stores sometimes, convenience stores do this, where they'll have a little dish and it's, you know, give a penny, take a penny, because sometimes folks don't have the right change or they don't have enough money, so, you know, they'll let you do this. Well, if you did that everywhere, you know, I could say, hey, I'm 98 cents short, let me take the whole the, the whole uh, bowl and I'll, I'll pay it. Well, they don't want you to do that. But it all kind of works out in the end. And people have been very, very nice to me if I haven't had, you know, the exact change. Or they round it, whoever the clerk is, and they'll say, go ahead, and whatever. But I'm not trying to get away with anything either. So I think that is significant. Now, years ago, I lived in a place where bottles and cans like soda, pop, you know, soft drinks, whatever... Um, or I guess beer too, anything that comes in an aluminum can, they would recycle that. And so you would pay a deposit on those kind of things. And, and not just aluminum, but soft drinks in general, you know, or, or you know, beverages in, in, you know, for the most part that were plastic or aluminum. And they would be like five cents, 10 cents, depending on wherever you were. And of course, when you'd go back, you would retrieve that because you're turning them in and, and you'd kind of put them, there were different machines for different um, types, whether it was plastic or aluminum or, or what have you, and you would get a nickel for each one. I always liked the turning it in. I would conveniently forget that I had already paid for, for those, but there was something very, very satisfying about getting a nickel per, you know, to the point that one day I was driving along or maybe I was a passenger, I can't remember, because the visual that I have is like a kidnapper, and I was being driven through this parking lot, and I see a can or bottle rolling around, and as we passed, I was like opening my door really quickly to reach out and scoop it up, like I was, you know, like I say, kidnapping <laughs> this bottle, um, or getting it before anybody else did, so I would get a nickel for it. And I know that's very, very extreme, to make my point, but yeah, I, I just, you know, why would people not? I'm, I'm not saying you have to be, you know, like a little, you know, you know, you know, whatever, you know, I'm not, I don't want to make any judgments, but you know, it's not like I'm out there, you know, like a hobo. Okay. <laughs> Cause we don't, do we really have hobos anymore? That's why I can say this and hopefully not offend anybody, but you know, it's not like I'm, I'm a hobo with a big stick on my, on my shoulder wrapped in a bandana with all my earthly possessions. And I'm going to be boarding, you know, a train, you know, try, you know, just riding the rails and going from place to place <laughs> wherever my, um, mode of transportation will take me. I'm not doing that. I don't think I'm to that point yet. But yeah, I do like to get extra found money. Now, the other thing my husband told me when I have gone on and on regaling the, the loveliness of getting a nickel or a dime, sometimes a quarter. Hey, that's big deal. That's a big deal because it's money you didn't have. That's all I'm going to say. And he pointed out to me, you know, I will listen a little bit more when you start talking about bills. Like, and I don't mean bills like you get in the mail and you've got to pay them. 
bills like dollar bills, paper, money. Well, okay, that would be lovely too. I mean, I'm certainly not going to, you know, ignore that. But come on, people usually will bend bend down and pick that right up because, hey, if you've dropped a dollar bill, you certainly don't want to be out the money. That's, that's worth the effort. But I'm also thinking, eh, that's probably been found long before I get there or people realize they... Um, you know, they see it a little bit more visibly because it's larger or the wind may pick up and, you know, you're not going to see it. Not that I won't look. I certainly will. Now, years ago, many years ago, I was living elsewhere and I was on a walk on a Saturday morning and I found a $10 bill. Yes. And I felt bad. Uh, I felt good, but I felt bad because I thought, oh gosh, I would hate to be out the $10. That would be heartbreaking because then you look later and go, oh my gosh, what happened? But in this instance, you know, what are you going to do? Go knocking on doors and saying, hey, is this your $10? Yes, it is. Everybody I asked would have said, yes, it is. You know, you're not going to know the serial number. So how do you identify it? It's a $10 bill. So I didn't really know what to do. There was no one else around that I could really you know, pose that question. But I was excited that I found the $10 bill. I have also been on the losing end of that, not to that amount of money, but I think I had um, maybe a, a, it was either a dollar or a $5 bill. I'm trying to remember. It fell out of my pocket. So we probably all had those. So it, you know, on some, on some level, I think maybe it evens out. I will tell you that years ago, I was at work and I was walking down the hall and I happened to reach into a pocket of, you know, something I was wearing and I pulled out a $10 bill. And I remember going, oh my gosh, that kind of found money, it just makes you deliriously happy if you've ever had that experience. That maybe you went to the bank and you got change or you went to a store and instead of putting it back in your wallet or pocketbook or purse or whatever that you would have all your money in, you just kind of stick it into your pocket at that moment. So when time passes and you are elsewhere and you find money like that, it is it is like a true bonus because it's like, oh, great, I'd forgotten all about this. So that is probably the most precious, delicious form of found money. In this instance, I was going down the hall and I was encountering somebody who was a bit of a curmudgeon, I guess is the best way to say it. You know, he was kind of rah, 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 grumbly, you know, the, the, I'm thinking of the Sesame Street characters that were up in the balcony, the two grumpy old men that are like, rah, 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 rah. you know, they had those funny faces um, because they were puppets. <laughs> so again, not offending any, any old people anywhere, but you know, these, the, these grumpy, grumpy people on uh, the show, the Muppets, Sesame Street, one of those. And I, when I was approaching him, I remember thinking my first inclination, because this is the kind of person that I am, would have been to say, oh my gosh, I just found $10 in my pocket. Except I had the presence of mind to stop myself because I thought this is not the audience for that. He would not have shared my profound joy. He would not have been happy for me or with me. He probably would have said, oh, right, you know, you found $10, you know, my day's is awful and you know life sucks and there you are finding ten dollars so no no if you want to delight in your own findings sometimes you just need to pick your audience and know you know that's not gonna be received he was not gonna be happy for my ten dollar profit at that point so you know keep it to yourself but you know I say all of that to just say that it's not about the money, the price, the amount, whatever. It is about, ultimately, counting your blessings. Have you had found blessings on any given day? Instead of looking at it like, oh gosh, this was a hard day, it was a difficult day, I haven't had a raise, I didn't get any money today, I didn't get paid, I got extra medical bills, you know, whatever it is, you know, things, things cost more than they used to, inflation, you know, we can go into all of that glass is half empty, or we can say, you know what, gosh, I hadn't noticed that, you know, there are birds, you know, flying overhead, and they're tweeting, and they're kind of singing, and, you know, aren't they kind of having a free 
not worried, you know, worry-free day, if you will. And the sun did pop out. I thought it was going to rain today. Or, gosh, you know, I'm glad I didn't run out of gas while I was driving today. And I'm very thankful that my body still cooperates in that I can still see, I can hear, I can speak, I can rest at night and not be worried. Maybe, maybe just the safety factor that... You know, we can read all the negative stuff in the paper and that's sensationalized and all the in the news and the media and all of, you know, those things that we can can dwell on. Or you can say, you know what? My family is safe. My children are healthy. Because not everybody can say that. You know, every day there are obituaries. Every day there are children that are in the hospital or someone stumbles and, and has something that they didn't expect to happen to them. So we can dwell on all of those, or we can say, you know what, today actually was a pretty good day. So if we can get that excited over finding a penny or a nickel or a dime, maybe if we really try to shift our thinking and say, you know what, I had food to eat today, I had someone that I hadn't spoken with or I saw or I was able to be kind to someone, I was able to do something nice, I was able to see a silver lining and I was able to see a blessing. You know, it's all in how we look at it, right? You know, there are many days I don't have found money, but there are very few days that I don't have a found blessing. Just something to think about. I hope you have a good day. This food for thought, penny for your thoughts, if you will. But oh gosh, if you count all your blessings, you may find you are very rich indeed. Next time, bye.